You know, as a Suzuki owner, this is a Suzuki 250. It is a 2015 model. Has been doing me pretty good so far. I really, really like it. And as a Suzuki owner, as far as the maintenance is concerned, one of the easiest things to do besides changing your oil, one of the other things that is super duper easy to do is to change out every year these internal anodes. And that's what I'm getting ready to do. Looks like by my schedule, I do it about every October. You got inside here, you got the anode and an O-ring. And I'm going to do a few here and show you. There's one, two, three, and there's, I believe, three on the other side. And then down below here, and then there's a hidden one on a 2015 Suzuki that you'll never, ever think about looking. And what it is, it's so easy to change. I love the fact that they did something like this. Let me get all prepped up and get everything out, and we'll pull one, and I'll show you. All right, right here, that bolt that's on the outside of each one of these internal anode is a 12 millimeter, which seems to be the correct size. 12 meter, millimeter socket, and then we're going to get on to the rest. Alrighty, the next step is you want, when you take this bolt out, the one that's in there, you want to find something that will go in to just this aluminum piece without going into the whole motor here. I speak generically. I'm a fisherman, not a Suzuki mechanic, but I do the little things. So what you want to do is you want to have something that will thread just in there, okay, because this bolt goes in and goes into the actual engine and holds this cap in here. Well, if you find a little bolt that will just go in the end, I'll show you, all you have to do is wiggle this out. And you can see how far that went in, and it gives me just enough purchase on this part to wiggle it out. Now, there you go. That's been in there about a year. And if you think you're doing so great washing your engine out, you can do all the washing you want, folks. That's what's in there. Around here... It's called St. John's River Mud. I wash my engine out religiously every single day that this boat ever goes in the water. And I'm reaching in there with my pinky finger. And look what I'm coming up with. That's muddy water. That's mud. That's inside your whole cooling system here. So, that's what's in there. Don't be shocked. It's in, been in every engine I've ever had running in the St. John's River in Jacksonville, Florida. It's pure mud out there. But, you can see, this anode isn't that bad. It's still there. Now, granted, it's coated and it's eaten away a little bit. Different ones always seem to be eaten away differently. So, I'll show you next of what to do with this right here after you pull it out. Alrighty folks, since you've got this out, the next thing you're going to need, I believe, remember everything's going to be in metric. This, I think, I can't really read it, but I believe it's an 18 millimeter, and that is the perfect size. And you are going to take that bolt out with the anode. It screws on. Now what I did off camera is I stick this in a vise. And then I stuck the wrench on there and pulled this out. So there's the anode. It's this particular one. It's not ate up that bad. And you're going to clean all this up. But there's the O-ring. And... 
this needs to come out of here. And that bolt will just end up screwing right on out. Now, that's the anode and that's the O-ring. And I'm going to show it to you in the brand new condition. All right, here you go. I got my O-rings out and I got my brand new zinc my anode. I'm going to take the old O-ring off with this little pick. Makes it really nice and easy. There we go. I'm going to clean all this up. Clean all this up. And then I'm going to put it all back together. But here's your anode. That's the part number for your anodes. Like I said, this 250, I believe every time I buy them, I just buy eight. I think there's seven in the engine total and a hidden one in the lower unit. And here's the O-rings. I don't, I'm not sure they're all in this bag because I bought them loose from the dealership. All you have to do is go to your dealer and they ought to have plenty of these things on hand. If not, they can order them from you. Or you can even go to places like boats.net and look it up, your engine and everything. And you can purchase these separately and do this in your leisure on an off day, on a, on a weekend. Usually I wait till it's nice and cool. It's not cool. It's hot right now. Um, it's in September. So Jacksonville, Florida is nowhere near cold by any means, or cool even. I'm going to clean this up, and we're going to reassemble. All righty. Here is the uh, all cleaned up unit with the uh, new anode, new O-ring. I always lube the O-ring just a little bit. because It's going to be pressing into this spot right in here. And believe it or not, yeah, I put them in, and O-ring rolled and cracked. The idea is to get it in here very nicely and you're gonna feel it pop in it's gonna there you go boom it just presses right in you're gonna line up the hole very very easy folks and it is really worth it my dealership that I deal with is up to $110 an hour now. I remember back when it was $75, $80, $90. Now it's $110. And if they're like anybody else, they're just looking in the book and uh, charging you accordingly. And you can leisurely do this on your own time. So let me get my wrench and we're going to tighten it up. I go hand tight. Like I said, I'm just just a owner trying to save some money. Give it a little torque. I don't know what it's supposed to be down to, but there you go. I just replaced that one. I got this one and this one. So it'd be six and I believe there's one down here. Well, I'll show you when I get to it. And then there's that mystery one. So, it's a piece of cake, folks, to do your internal anodes on a Suzuki. I don't know any about other engines. Only thing I do know is on a Honda. When I had Hondas, they were also inside the water jacket part of the engine here, if that's what you call it. And... Uh, you had to take that all off. It was a real chore. I think I might have done it once. It was a it was a chore. For me, it was a chore. This Suzuki couldn't be looking out for you in any better way, in my opinion. And I'm not trying to be a fanboy. I'm not trying to be a fanboy of Suzuki. I'm just saying, I don't know if they all do this. Maybe they all do it now. But when I found out that these were here, 
and I could easily change them out in my leisure, save lots of money, just buy the parts and do it myself, I was all in. I'll show you a little bit more as we go along, but I'm not going to go through every single one because it'll be a very tedious process for you to watch. All right, here's how I actually get that out. I stick it down in my vise with a towel or an old t-shirt here. I don't want to scuff up this aluminum any at, at, at any cost. And then that comes, that screw will come easily out. You don't need a vise, but it makes it handy. You could hold it with some pliers and a, and a towel around it or something like that. All right, there it is, and I'm going to take the pick, and I'm going to take the O-ring off. Any little device, tool, screw, mic, little small micro screwdriver will easily take that out of that groove. And then the next thing is, is to clean all this up. You can see in here, there's some buildup. I want everything perfectly clean and I'll clean all this up with a brass brush. All right, I'm putting the one in right here. Boom. And you feel it slide right on in. Two done right now this one and this one and now I'm going to go to this one and there's of course one thing over here in the Jetty Wolf Ranchero Deluxe Fish Camp Pass Blue Ribbon good old 16 ouncer on a hot 90 degree day working in the shop on the engine makes things always just a little more pleasurable all right I got this side done and these two right here, there's one right here and two right here, same as the other side, were particularly hard to wiggle out. And what always bothers me about this job, and it may bother you, depending on how long you've let yours sit in your engine. Like I said, mine get changed out yearly. Now granted, I use my boat 300 to 350 hours a year is what it usually boils down to. And that's nothing compared to these guys that are out trolling in the ocean all summer long. I'm a spot fisherman. I anchor up and we fish a spot. Then we move. We may move 100 yards and I anchor up and I fish a spot. So in my mind, that's really not a ton of hours compared to a lot of other guys in the charter business. And uh, these were too, too particularly hard to get out. Had to really wiggle them like crazy. And even at one point in between the body here, I got a little tiny crack and I had the bolt sticking out. And I had to put a little thin screwdriver right in there and just move it a little bit and then it wiggled out. And then the problem I saw is when you pull this out, and I've seen this every year that I've had this engine, is when you pull this out, there's a ton of gunk. Uh, part of the uh, anode itself, a lot of gunk all around, built up around that. And I try to get it out as much as I can to clean out this, this hole. But, as you may notice or have noticed, a lot of that gunk is gonna fall down inside here. And where is that gunk gonna end up? Little particles and things like that. I'm thinking it could end up in my thermostats, trying to pass through my thermostats, and it's going through my lower unit in my water pump. Now, the water pump, it's probably just, it's not gonna be a big deal. But what I'm going to do tomorrow is, after I'm done this entire job, I'm going to stick the engine in a 
in my horse trough that I run it in because I run it in a barrel. I'm going to run it in a barrel, see how everything works, and then I'm going to go up in here because the thermostats on this on this engine are four volts and it pop, uh, thermostats, you can pop them right out in two seconds. I'm going to pull my thermostats out and see how they look um, after running. I'm going to let the engine heat up to at least 130 degrees maybe, and then I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to pull the thermostats and see. Just because there was a lot of gunk built up on these two, and I'm wondering where that gunk's going to end up. Because that gunk is going to and could end up up top, or it could end up down below. I'm not sure. That's one, two, three, four, five, six on the other side. There's two more. Number seven, I can't stand doing. I just don't like messing with the Tupperware, as we. That's what the motorcycle guys call the plastic uh, cowlings and things like that. The Tupperware. Well, I gotta get rid of the side of the Tupperware over here because the next one is for around the oil pan. I believe it's near the oil pan. And then I'll show you the hidden gem, number eight. Alrighty, I'm gonna show you where internal anode number seven is. I gotta get the flashlight out for this one. Okay, Tupperware is off the side, and there it is right there. You can see right there. To orientate yourself, let me step back. All right, right there is the next one. Really, really nasty is what I'd call. Got all this brown stuff all over it. Really pretty nasty. Came out very easy. Right, I don't know how good the light's gonna be, but it's almost 100% intact. Let me get the flashlight out so you can see it. Almost 100% intact just encrusted all right so that's the mystery that would be on the port side up I guess just underneath where you take the bottom cowling off the shaft part of the cowling I mean I don't know what this stuff is I don't know what this is. It's just brown gook. I mean, believe me, if I had my druthers, I would love to fish some place that was pretty salt free, lots of speckled trout. I would love to fish in a place like that. And I believe that low salinity, clean water is called Lake Pontchartrain, Louisiana. Someday, my friends, someday, I could actually reuse this one. I'm gonna put a new one in there. You go through all the motions of taking this cover off, the side cover of the engine. I'm gonna change this one out too. And then I'm gonna show you number eight. All right, let me give you an orientation again. Okay, here's the starboard side. Then I got the cowling, the bottom part of the engine cowling here just hanging. I know being black, it's really difficult to see here. Then down here, you take your cowling off. And this is on the 250, and it may be that way on similar engines. And then there it is right there. And it's above some kind of uh, water pressure sensor here or something. I just got it hanging and I'm ready to pin it back up together and screw it back together. 
and now we're going to get into location interior anode number eight here's for the grand finale I got the engine tilted up here on the Suzuki lower unit we have this pointy little uh, gear case here's your regular water intake and then you have this shallow water intake and if I pull this out I've already taken the screw out there it is there's the screen and there is mystery number eight you can see water dripping out of it mystery number eight I've already changed it that's why it's looking so good they're just like these anodes here everybody wants to change those you know Suzuki has two on one side and one on the other so um, you've got those you got this anode right here underneath your trim and tilt bracket on my boat I've got a three pounder right there and then I've got another circular one right there being it's an aluminum boat so I'm sort of anode heavy you only need seven o-rings because there is no o-ring on here this isn't the same situation okay if you can see it there it just screws in with the regular screw no holder of any sort so you only need seven o-rings but buy eight always buy eight because if you screw one up you got a spare so it's eight inter internal anodes all right eight total this is number eight and seven o-rings but buy eight o-rings in case you mess up I should be good to go got a new water pump in here I should be uh, pretty good to go for a while well it's day two morning of the day after changing these anodes these internal zincs as you would call them with o-rings that I showed you and now I just ran out the engine make sure everything's good to go there was all that debris that build up around those uh, anodes interior anodes I tried to dig it all out and everything but you know it falls down inside the water jacket there so I ran out the engine for a decent amount of time nothing seemed to have uh, done anything I really was watching the you know the old pee hole thing over here um, that's always so easily clogged up I do see debris down in my trough here in which I run out the engine it's a uh, Rubbermaid 75 Rubbermaid 75 commercial products I call it the horse trough see there it is um, the reason that I use this to run run out oh god garbage truck is coming uh, the reason I use this to run it out is for the sheer fact that down here you got these low water pickups and it's kind of really stupid what the uh, you know what the owner's manual I believe says it says to put duct tape over these because here's your high water pickup and then you got your low water pickup so um, yeah that's really stupid like duct tape is really gonna hold so I bought one of these it also works for uh, roof leak con water containment during hurricanes which I've already used it for but here's the other little thing that I'm just gonna pass on I might have to wait until the beeping stops. The beeping has officially stopped. 
So, here's what I was about to show you. To run out, of course I'm using this uh, horse trough, Amazon, believe it or not, I believe delivered this. Uh, not that expensive, really good to have, fits the outboard completely, no problem. Um, I use one of these. This is just from the garden center to, uh, to attach my hose. It really works out on the stern or the front. Here's the front uh, plug. And as you notice here, I've drilled a hole and put a ball bearing swivel and a dulock snap and I attach these because you're kind of really SOL if you take these off and you leave them or you lose it out on the road or something like that. Um, then I got this cutting board on the back of my boat. A lot of people always ask me, what is this? Well, this is where I keep this. It screws right onto a fitting that I've got stuck in the starboard there. So. I have my wash attachment right here with me at all times. Not that I need it anywhere, but it's better than sitting here at home somewhere where I'm going to lose it. This is a really good idea, folks, right here. Well, as you can see, I did the same thing back here. And you know, I speak from experience in pretty much everything. I left one of these somewhere at home here so now I took this nut out here I put a little small piece of light like paracord a uh, ball bearing swivel and a dulock snap drilled a hole through there and now the swivel is imperative so you can turn it and uh, there you go that's a couple of the little things that I've done. The one up front, the one in the back, and I keep this real handy. Now, I'm going to get down and I am going to pan for debris that I believe came out of the engine. Right there, I think you can see a little bit of it. There's some rather large chunks of junk. And some other little particulate matter right there that just broke apart in my finger okay but there's debris chunks from changing out those interior anodes and I was concerned that that would uh, get in my thermostat and clog it or something I still may pull the thermostats just because it's so easy to do and just take a look at them. I think I'm going to pop the cover on the big Suzuki and check that out. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. Till next time, subscribe because you don't know from fishing reels to ugly sticks to fishing rigs. It's all on my channel because this is life for me. Day in, day out, keeping the motor running, keeping the boat running, keeping the tackle running. So, thanks for watching. I wanna go fishing, cause it takes my stress away. I wanna go fishing, try and cast my blues away. I'm fishing the Jetty Wolf tomorrow. Come on.